Hey, everybody, what's going on? Rob Sisternino back here. And boy, do we have a fun podcast for you here today? Because uh, we are blessed because we have one of the all time fun people to talk about Survivor here with us back. And it's always nice when uh, some of our old friends come home. Please welcome the great two time Survivor. Cass McQuillan is here. Chaos Cass, how are you? Woo, thanks for having me, Rob. I was so surprised and excited when you guys uh, reached out and were like, we want to hear what you think about this other lady who's weird. Yes, um, yes. Please, please come talk. I I'm so happy uh, to get the chance to talk to you because here we are. I mean, um, that it it's really nice when, you know, after all this time, we can reconnect that um, in this coming spring, this is going to be 10 years since Survivor Kagiyan. And I remember because we just started up Patreon, it was the spring of 2014. So yeah, this is going to be 10 years uh, since it all started with Survivor with you. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it has been a decade since I played. So that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, And I didn't even know what a podcast was. I remember. I was like, I don't know what this is. Yeah, it was the very early days of all of this. And so uh, it's so nice that you are, you know, here and we get to catch up. And I, I don't even remember. Uh, if, I feel like that maybe we were uh, had talked a little bit like back in 2020, but not even like on a podcast. And so uh, really excited just to uh, connect. How have you been, Cass? I'm great. You know, I'm still here in Texas, which has its, you know, that's not a great thing, but, uh, you know, family's good. Life is mm -hmm. good. Uh, you know, I'm a professor now full time, just dealing with being the mom of a teenager and, you know, that era of life. So, yeah. uh, keep them busy. Yeah. And then Cass, you not only are a professor, but I know that you're also doing something with, reality tv in terms of your teaching could you tell people what you're working on yeah i've been trying to get this show pretty much since i started teaching i've been pitching to texas tech university where i work to teach a show about reality tv production editing storytelling and our our perceptions and biases and really tie sociology to the business and everything that is reality tv you know and this last year, I actually ran into the the then chair of the media and communications department, uh, is a huge Survivor fan. And we met for coffee. And I said, I got this idea. And he took it and ran with it, thankfully. Yeah. Um, and so I'm teaching this semester a show called or a, a class called uh, Reality TV and Society. The tribe has spoken. Yeah. And um I believe they told me, and it's uh, in media and communications. I teach at the business school. I teach business law, and then I teach in the energy commerce department about renewable energy and sustainability. So wow, for me to be in media and communication is, you know, I'm not that kind of professor. So they paired me up with a game theory professor from who's kind of the esports and video game design type professor. Um, to watch me to make sure I don't go rogue, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's just been fun. It, we got it approved. It filled, I guess, in the first day it was open as a class and there was a huge wait list. There's only 50 seats in the classroom. Um, and I've already got emails from people who want to get in and getting great feedback. The students love it. Um, and we just, we have a blast and we just talk about reality TV and learn a little psychology and, and things so it's it's going by really fast it's fun. is the primary focus survivor or do you do other shows also well we started with like the history of reality tv uh the concepts of voyeurism and and then just kind of the evolution from you know candid camera american family the real mm -hmm. world yeah um and then we talk about uh the history some of the concepts behind it we look at schadenfreude you know why we take pleasure in watching other people be humiliated and what that says about us um, so we look at different scenes from different shows that have been controversial or people just remember. Uh, and it's just fun. We're learning psychological concepts. Then we look at, you know, juxtaposition and filmmaking and why they show us a shot and how the sunrise will show. And then we'll show something else, the same shape. And uh, we look at editing, 
And we, in this class, the first day of class, um, and what's funny in this class is I have a lot of Survivor fans, some yeah. super fans, you know, who are, oh my God, they know who you are. They're probably going to listen to this. You know, they're completely geeked out about it. And then I have about eight people who are able to take the class in lieu of another class they may or may not have passed called uh, web design. So I have this <laughs> yeah. like eight or 10 guys who are like, I've never watched reality. I don't know what this crap is. And now they're totally into it. One of them came to me last night and was like, I'm applying for Survivor, you know. So some of our stuff yeah. is like the first day, I only had the spoilers off of Inside Survivor, the cast yeah. picture with the age and location, and then the little first two minute promo. So the first day of class, the first thing we did was, who's your winner pick based on this? Who's your ride or die? Who's most like you? And who was out first? And then we followed that through the season. So we watched the live, uh, the show live in class, the first, the premiere. Yeah. And then this week we actually watched in class live because I hadn't gotten my act together for the class and I was tired. So I was like, let's just catch up and watch it. Yeah. And they're, it's really fun to see perceptions change, like who they hated. And we went around the room and just talked about bias and perception just off a picture and a little clip. And people who had visceral reactions to people versus where they are now. And and kind of we take a deep dive onto why we think that. Like, why did they hate this person from that clip? What does that say about them? So we're kind of being a little psychology based in it. And then we also look at why did they show us this? Like, why did they show a clip of this scene? Mm -hmm. When we only get one minute of someone, why is this what they showed us? It's like putting to the pieces together of a puzzle, right? So we yeah. really pay attention, not just for entertainment, but also, you know, each episode is its own storyline. It has to be a complete package, but that package has to build to the end result. So storytelling wise, what are the producers thinking? Yeah. Why, why is this important to the ultimate story and that week's story? Do you think that you're going to keep this going and do it again next semester? I just sent out a message to media and communications asking, are we doing this again? Um, what's it look like if we are? They had wanted to increase it to 100 students, which I think is too many because we yeah. get into these debates. You know, when you, you can imagine 50 people, people in are going to transfer if you are going to keep doing it. Like yeah, they're, they're going to like people are going to want like I want to I want to take Cass's class. Well, the other thing I'm trying to get done is I would like to run our own campus based survivor like you see some of the colleges have. Mm -hmm. uh, they they do mostly underground ones, but I would like our media department to get with our business marketing department and put together an on campus survivor competition where we could highlight features of the campus, mm -hmm. have the rewards be like, you know, tacos from the local taco place they would get their advertising and really teach students who are interested in filmmaking, editing, yeah. story, and then the business kids too involved. And would so you be the host, Cass? I, I would like to be the host. I think you I would mean, be a very fun host for Survivor. I think that the, the tribal councils hosted by you, I think would be a uh, really fun TV. Yeah. So, I mean, the student semen really interested in that, especially the media students that I don't usually, I'm over in my ivory tower there in the business mm -hmm. school. So um, yeah, the students in media really look forward to that. I said, you know, imagine if we went to the campus pool and you had to do an underwater shot of people doing something, you'd have to really think from filmmaking perspective yeah. too. So with me, it's hard because I teach such an obscure nerdy business thing uh, to come into media and calm and be like, I got an idea. Why don't you follow me? Um, so there's a little stuff involved, but sure. Uh, the buzz around campus is that this is the class to get into. It's fun. It's unlike yeah. anything else. We had them uh, for the first big assignment. They had to apply to survivor. They didn't have to submit, but I got the application from casting and then had them read about the video. So they had to make videos and do applications within the parameters. And I had given them advice on basically what Adam Klein does, I guess. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. For free, you know, well, I guess they pay tuition. But, uh, <laughs> they pay tuition. So it's, yeah. it's been, uh, it's been fun. And we, I mean, we're looking into every aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Well, that's, 
Uh, really exciting. I had read that you were doing that. And so, uh, you know, I find that stuff fascinating. So uh, really cool to hear about what you're doing. It sounds like you're having fun. And then how fortuitous also this season that you get back into it, that we have a woman cast on the show who, and no pun intended, uh, she's cast on the show, uh, that she, here we go with Emily and that she goes through casting and they tell her like, Hey, this psychological profile, you know who you are exactly the same as Cass McQuillan. Yeah. I mean, at first when I heard that, I thought, well, cause she initially thought it was someone named Cassidy. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Oh boy, this woman's not going to do well. If her perception of herself is she's some cute young player and they really meant, no, you're like Cass. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was really concerned for Emily, just uh, self-awareness wise, when I heard that she was confused, which cast. But um, first of all, HIPAA violation by Survivor for giving away <laughs> yeah, my psych results. Point. Okay, <laughs> Dr. Liza, I'm coming for you. Um, so uh, breaking federal laws in casting. Uh, be so <laughs> but <laughs> Jeff will get a kick out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Anyway, um, if they're but in Fiji, is it international law? Yeah. Well, I mean, I believe they're still in LA, right? <laughs> yeah. When okay. So, but I'm sure I signed away. I teach a class on the contracts and the legalities of everything. Um, as I mean, one of the the days in class, so we went over our contracts and and all that too. So I think they own me and, and my medical records for that purpose. Mm -hmm. I guess anyway. But yeah. uh, but yeah, interesting because when I met with casting way back you know 10 years ago um i remember sitting in with dr liza up in her giant office there and her uh and her saying um you have an extremely unique profile for a female player and she said i don't think i've seen this kind of play this kind of results before and she said you really think more like a man you're extremely logical um you know and not making decisions emotion based which is pretty ironic since a lot of people say i did that um as their criticism, but, um, it was enough for her to say, you know, you're a very unique player and not having had that psychological profile before I did ask her if I was a sociopath and she said, no, <laughs> no. So, okay, good. Okay. So I wanted to verify that since she had all the tests. Yeah. So that's confirmed. Um, and then for her not to feel that way about anyone 10 years prior or 10 years since is very interesting to me. Um, and for Emily to have that profile, means she's an extremely logical person yeah. and, and uh, probably almost to a fault sometimes, you know, is, is an issue with that kind of thinking pattern, uh, especially for females where we're supposed to be a little softer or more contemplative. So has it been interesting for you cast to then watch somebody who that, okay, like testing wise, okay, this person has the same, you know, personality makeup that you have. And then as sort of like from, you know, be, have an experience of almost like, I guess being like outside your body of like, is, is this how I would react to the situation if I was there? Well, you know, it's funny before the season started, you know, how Emily got on the beach and said out loud to Bruce, like you've already played. I told when we were going through the pregame stuff, I, I said, me as a player, I'd want to get rid of Bruce. I said, I think it's unfair because he's already gone through casting, going to Fiji, the pregame, everything. He doesn't have the jitters that even though he only played like an hour, I don't know, a couple hours or whatever, he still went through the excitement that is when you first set foot on the beach and that uncertainty. So he had a little advantage at that point. And then he has connections to other players. So when she said that, that's what I had told my class, my reasoning. Would I have said that to someone not on my tribe? No, I probably, you know, I didn't really say things to people on my season. I said them yeah. to the camera um, where, you know, Emily will just directly say, I don't like him, even though he's not on your tribe. And there's no world in which right now it's relevant to state that. Um, so, yeah, when I saw that, I was like, well, that's exactly what I thought, you know, in yeah. terms of what I was thinking of Bruce and being there. Yeah, so, it seems like that in the like back and forth with Jeff, uh, she seems like that she is almost like compelled to, you know, uh, like not not just like let like um, a 
a, a statement go by if she doesn't agree with it, where we saw at tribal council this week and on the opening of the show where, you know, people were saying, oh, we, we love to have Bruce. And, and she, well, you know, I, I'd like to actually push back on that. I don't feel the uh, that, that's that's not how I feel about that. And it's been, you know, really great to watch as far as television goes. And I, I think that in this era of the game, uh, I kind of feel like that maybe it's appreciated, uh, not by Bruce, but I do think that players like that she's not hiding things. Yeah, they're going to see her as not being deceptive and not capable of that. And they're going to be like, oh, that's just Emily, you know and be a little more accepting. I also think part of that dynamic with Jeff, I was thinking probably in casting, um, Jeff was probably rather aggressive and trying to be superior with her, probably because she tested so high on certain things. Because mm -hmm. I remember this from casting where Jeff asked questions that insinuated, you know, do you think you're smarter than me? That kind of thing. And I can imagine in just seeing his interaction with her, like last uh, episode he said something like thanks Emily in a kind of a tone uh, that Jeff feels this chip on his shoulder and and so does Emily and I think their interaction is almost like you know when you know you're smart and you think you know and then Jeff obviously always thinks he's the smartest person on the planet so I think there's this ego uh, thing there uh, I could see which I feel like I had with Jeff just like, I'm not going to say things you want me to say just because you want me to say them, Jeff, and I'm not going to play your games, which is why he doesn't like me, of course. But I just saw that one interaction and was like, oh, maybe Jeff will keep it in check now because he's being more, I don't know. He's a little bit more of the grandpa now. I think that, you know, as like the years have gone by, especially in the new era, that I, I do think that he's like a little softer with the contestants uh, than he might have been like uh, in the heyday. Yeah, I mean, he he's like Grandpa Botox, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's acting the grandpa, but he's still got... And my students ask me, why are his shoes always so white? It really bothers the students that his shoes are so white. Oh, interesting. I was like, I didn't even notice. Yeah, I've never really noticed the shoes either. But they did ask me about his facial work. I was mm -hmm. like, well, I'm not privy to that. But yeah, I'm sure he, he hasn't changed much. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you tell the students about how Emily's uh, personality profile was similar to yours? Did you give them like that backstory? I'm not sure I knew that when we did our blind picks. Um, but after the first episode, people hated her because we watched mm -hmm. it live and then we kind of talked about it and people really wanted her to go that day. And I did tell them at some point, you know, well, we have the same psych profile and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, they were saying, no, you're not at all at like, you know, after that. But they know me a little differently because I'm in class with them and, yeah, you know, not an edited version. Well, what's also then very interesting with Emily is, OK, so she had this same sort of psych profile as uh, what you had gotten on your test results. And then she comes into this game in these three tribes and then has uh, is on a tribe. That's a little bit of a disaster. And actually, that uh, Luzon, you actually avoided going to a tribal council once. Whereas the Lu Lu tribe, maybe it's the Lu at the don't don't name these tribes Lu anything because it's bad luck. But uh, there, she too is part of a tribe that is uh, having a lot of problems. Yeah, I mean the big difference being they two people have quit. So we haven't had to vote people out yeah. per se. I mean, she would have been gone week one, apparently. She would have. Uh, yeah. And, and that's an interesting position too. That's somewhat similar to mine where you go and you start and there's a group and like my first season, I wasn't part of the first vote out. So you feel alienated. So certainly yeah. if she knew that if Hannah had not quit, she would have been gone. From day one, her first reaction is going to be alienation. So even though, um, you know, things have worked out and she's bonded with Caleb and things, that first uh, three days when you realize, oh, crap, I cannot, uh, these people are out to get me, that's going to stay with you the whole game. So, like, if you're constantly on the ropes, 
you have to be more aggressive in your play and you have to be more paranoid from the beginning. So uh, it's been, it's, it's been interesting to watch um, knowing she would have gone home, but for Hannah quitting it had to hurt yeah. her feelings. And she, I'm sure she's still carrying that, even though you put it in a, in a compartment if she thinks like me, she's like, yeah, well, you know, Caleb was once going to vote me out just like Sabaya and everyone else just because they didn't doesn't mean that thought is not still in their head. Can I ask you about in your uh, season back in Kagiyan? So you uh, were left out of the vote when David went home. Did you and David get along well or were you both just sort of left out of uh, what the other four wanted to do on that first vote? Well, the other four made that pact within minutes of hitting the beach. And David yeah. and I were the two older people. And, you know, David is, uh, you know, he was very aggressive out there with what he thought sure. should be going on. Um, so I was just kind of being helpful around camp and and doing things and really minding my own business. Uh, not I didn't want to talk strategy. I thought Jatia should go, right? Because... She wasn't doing anything. Um, I didn't know they had already planned their final four uh, in the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but then it, like me, Emily ends up in this swing vote position, which I was in multiple times in Kagiyan. Yeah. Um, and then she makes, you know, she knows it and she makes her decision accordingly. Yeah. So I, I was just curious because of that. I, you know, um, don't really know a lot about, uh, you know, David's time on Survivor. I had been, you know, he has a podcast also that, uh, you know, he uh, talks about baseball. And of course he has like, uh, you know, uh, is really tapped into a lot of things. So, uh, and he's, I think, a very interesting personality to listen to. So I was just curious to know if you and he uh, like had gotten along well when you were together. I wouldn't say we didn't get along. You know, I would say we got along. I mean, we were the yeah. same age group, not the same real demographic, you know, background wise, but we kind of were forced to get along because yeah. there you had the four people. Um, and then, yeah, then he was gone. So mm -hmm. is he someone I could see that it would go to the end ever in Survivor? I don't think so. Yeah. But I just think he's another personality who I think that he says what's on his mind also. Yeah. He pretty much would be the Emily on day one, right? When he's calling out Garrett Mm -hmm. uh, and saying, I, I don't want this big guy here. So I'm going to get rid of him. And we have, we're not even two minutes into the game. <laughs> so almost you should compare Emily to David in episode one, right? Coming yeah. out of the gate swinging when you don't need to be swinging at anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So you mentioned how Emily has been like in the middle on some of these votes. And of course, you know, famously, uh, you were in the middle between with uh, with Spencer and Garrett and uh, Jatia and Tasha. Uh, we saw specifically, uh, well, at her original tribe that she was the person in the middle between Sabaya and Caleb. And uh, Sabaya had tried to bring her in. Were you surprised when she went to Caleb and told Caleb what was going on? I was not really surprised because in, in episode one, when they were in that competition, there were three people sitting praying while the Lulu was losing. Yeah. And that was Sabaya, Hannah, and Sean. And I said to my class, those three are in it together. Because if you have that bond of religion and you're sitting there praying during a competition instead of cheering, you're not in tune with the other people. Like, it's yeah. just a different vibe that usually we're like, come on. Um, so I said, those three are a group. So when Hannah quit, that group was fractured. I didn't feel like Emily felt part of that group, you know, and they were all kind of crying with Brandon and all of that. And Emily, if she's like me, she's like, what the fuck are you crying about? You know, I mean, we're, it's, we're it's day two, you know? So, yeah. uh, so yeah, I, I didn't think, um, she was really part of it. And then one thing I do uh, feel envious of is her having someone like Caleb who would come to her and, and kind of seize the opportunity to be like, Hey, let me just bring you down a notch and let me be your friend, which I think is brilliant. And um, for her to make her feel more safe, no matter what, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so I don't feel like I had that ever in Kagiyan. What about second chances? Was there anybody who was kind of like that with you? 
Well, second chances, I got along great with everyone till the merge. You were, you were and, kumbaya cast. And then, um, you know, I had unfortunately had someone who I had played with before who had the numbers who wanted me out. Yeah, I mean that's the gist of it. There, yeah, with uh, with second chances was you know that person I knew pregame. That person was coming for me. I tried to, you know, iron it out at the campfire night one and we made fake promises. But when we got to the merge and the numbers weren't there, it was very obvious uh, who was going home. Yeah. So, but, you know, do, was that a smart move of that person to throw away their whole game for a vendetta? You make it to the end and get no votes. That's that's not good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Cass, uh how do you feel about the aliens and the pyramids? If you heard the tribe uh, discussing that? Well, you know, I live kind of near Roswell, New Mexico. Yeah. So I'm all for an alien theory. Um, yeah. I mean, I've been to South America and seen some of the alien theories for, you know, Machu Picchu and, and these things. So uh, I don't know. I did think it was like such an interesting e edit uh, thing. And tell me if, if you feel like this was intentional where we saw back in the first episode where Sabaya was like, yeah, the aliens, you know, the pyramids are there. They're batteries for the aliens. And we see Emily like, oh, really? I'm on a tribe that's talking about aliens. And then on this last episode, Kendra was talking about, oh, hey, we're all so uh, like uh, eccentric. We're like the Alien Alliance. And Emily is in the show. She's like, yes, yes, aliens. Yes. Uh, yeah. And did not push back. I'm like, oh, no, not aliens. We're not doing that. Well, I think she's learned, right? So yeah. she's kind of toned it down. I think Caleb did some coaching there uh, and probably production did too. Because they're like, wow, we've got this great character who's a great narrator, who's great saying stuff that we want to get. So let's, let's train her a little so she can stay on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, cause they love a good narrator. Yeah. Well, okay. So then we saw, then there was a swap, uh, where Emily came out of that. And then here we go this week. And <clears throat> I knew you were coming on, uh, this week. And, uh, when we're seeing here's Emily, in the middle of this vote, where she has to be the like is the ultimate decider between Austin and Drew, and then uh, between poor Brando and Kendra. And, and did you like the decision that Emily made? Yeah, I felt that was the correct decision because when Brando was in the shelter trying to form the Nerd Alliance, which by the way, I'm friends with Brando now on Pokemon. Oh, he's, are you a Pokemon person? Uh, well, when I travel, a, a couple of years ago, I was in Italy and my daughter and I got quarantined and there was two Poke stops near where we were quarantined. So we downloaded Pokemon and we're battling yeah. like hotel employees or something and playing it. But um, yeah, we're like, we're friends. He just sent me a gift on Pokemon. Wow. So, so let me see if I could show you. Cause I know, um, so yeah. I, I not that big a Pokemon to know what he was talking about, but look, Oh, you can't see it. Where is it? Yeah, tell me what oh. it is. Yeah. Tell me. Uh, okay. Yeah, see, where's Brando? It. That's yeah, Brando's that's, Pokemon. That's, Bra that's Brando and Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, yeah, you're but, in it. I, I have it. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so I gave him my Pokemon information and now we're Pokey friends. Yeah. So, wow. um, I don't normally play though. Only when I'm traveling to collect rare Pokemons. Yeah, I, don't I guess because you're around the, uh, like all these college students that you're so well versed in uh, what's going on. Yeah, the campus is full of Pokemon and stops. In my office, I can just get stops, and you know, mm -hmm. I still don't know what I'm doing. But uh, you know, my daughter yeah. and I, when we travel, we'll turn it on and see what's going on, and mm -hmm. yeah, get postcards and weird creatures. I don't know. I'm not that involved but i thought it was funny yeah <laughs> but actually so going back to that nerd alliance um so here you have brando who's basically saying i'm gonna throw my teammate under the bus and want to get with you two um and throw in and then you have that lie well uh drew never said he wanted to throw anyone under the bus so you want to stick with the person who's not immediately flipping and showing they're gonna flip right mm -hmm. and then also bruce being on the blue tribe originally and Emily possibly knowing that Bruce um, 
doesn't like her. I wouldn't like someone who threw my name out right out of the gate. Yeah. So I don't know if she was thinking that, but yeah, if, if she's thinking he's with Bruce and then didn't That's Kendra, didn't Kendra secretly go over there and we yeah, didn't so see it? Kendra had made like a bond with uh, Emily apparently from the first tribal yeah. council. So that, that was, that was a point in favor of going with uh, the blue tribe. Yeah. So why would she throw out for this guy, a guy who's, potentially bonded with someone she's already thrown under the bus against a woman that even though we don't know it, she's seen. Yeah. And then um, Drew and Austin weren't, weren't cracking at all. Mm -hmm. So I thought it made sense um, to yeah. get rid of Brando. I thought he was overplaying way too quickly. It, it seemed like that for Emily, that a part of her calculus was that both these guys were sharing all the advantages uh, that they had with her, like of like giving her a lot of like game information. I, I, is that something that would be very meaningful to you? I think it's it's valuable. I mean, I never had anybody share anything with me, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm sad. No, I'm. <laughs> uh, but I mean, that does have value. I mean, I guess Tony just showed me where he hid his idols. Mm -hmm. But what value is that other than he has an idol? Yeah. I mean, so, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's valuable, but to me also, like if logically I'm looking at the red tribe, um, re the original Reba, there's more shields on there, right? That was clearly the more visibly stronger tribe. Um, so if I'm going to align and I'm someone who's not a great physical contender or anything, I, I want to be with the Austins of the group, you know, Bello is kind of, I don't know, all over the place. But yeah. from what she's seen, my my money's on red, you know. Kes, does it mean a lot to you that your season in Survivor Kageon, like, is still, like, talked about in, like, with, with you know, in so many different ways, almost like, a, like, a, like, it's mythology of that people still talk about, okay, the Cass, the Wu, the Tony, you know, uh, and I mean, it goes uh, goes down the line of so many different like iconic people from that season. Like th that must be so interesting. I mean, even I feel like that of all the different seasons of the show, I feel like that that season is one that I could tell you uh, almost like every single thing that happened. Yeah, it's weird. And um, I mean, that was just casting gold, right? That whole cast. We were all nuts, right? And we all wanted it. We want every person, maybe not Morgan, but almost everybody. Maybe not there. Lindsay. Lindsay. Well, she didn't want to kill Trish on TV. So mm -hmm. there's that factor too. Yeah. But, you know, by and large, I, I would say probably 12 out of the 18 people were there to win. And we're not seeing that right now, right? This, the, oh, uh, let, I just want one of you to win. Or, I uh, you know, it, it's... I think you just had this right mix of people who thought not only wanted to win, but yeah. thought they could win. And that's a difference too. It's getting that mindset. I remember when I went to Kagiyan, I told my husband, you know, I'm not going to think about you or home or anything. I'm going there and I'm going into mode. And, and he kind of said, yeah, you do that because you know, this is a one time deal and uh, it's a million bucks. So yeah. go forth and conquer. And I, I actually thought I could win, you know, and I never lost that mindset until, you know, Wu won. But um, then uh, to m maintain that, that thinking, like that sole focus and goal, I just think Kageon had more people like that than seasons past or yeah. since maybe. Um, so also being great characters um, and just, I don't think there had been re a new player season in a while when Kageon happened. Yeah. And yeah, so it was, it was the first one, in, in, you know, um, in a little bit, really, I think since one world uh, that we had had three seasons in a row that had returning players. Also, you know, that it was a season that also uh, was, a th had a theme when, yes. uh, and, and it really did like there was blood versus water right before that. But uh, the idea of uh, brains versus beauty versus brawn, then really, uh, I think that they were like chasing that for a while of trying to find another. I mean, they even did a second brains versus beauty versus brawn. Um, and now to the point where they don't even do a theme anymore uh, because it's so that it, re it really boxed them in. Would you like to see themes come back? I enjoy the themes because I enjoy the labels and the psychology behind 
I'm putting you on the brawn team. Just when I put that label on someone, they're like, I'm strong. You mm -hmm. know, I'm smart. I'm beautiful. And you fit your label. So I think uh, that's an interesting thing to do. If you tell someone they're a hustler, uh, they're like, yeah, you know what? That means I'm smart and I'm, I'm going to do this. You know, you're a hero. Yeah. Uh, you, no matter what, when someone says that to you, you take it to heart in some way and you put that label on yourself. So I think that's kind of fun, but you have to have the right mix. And sometimes they miss the mark because they're trying yeah. to uh, do that. I don't know what's going on with casting though. Um, so, and another thing on Kagi on, I think with its longevity is I feel like it's right around the time people started getting, like you started podcasting seriously. Um, Reddit picked up at that time, these uh, little groups where they talk about it online. We had social media gaining traction with, Twitter and stuff. So I think it was a confluence of events, right? Where people are starting to discuss the show on multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got all this stuff to discuss. There's a lady throwing rice in the fire. There's a lady that quit. There's, you know, what happened here and there, you, you know? So I think it was just the timing of it within yeah. society as a whole. Uh, and, and also when they put it on Netflix, uh, when Netflix showed Survivor during the pandemic, they showed Heroes, Villains, and Kagi On. Yeah. So even if you had lost interest in Survivor, you know, five years before, that was one of the first things you saw. And so you could immediately connect with that. What was that like for you where, you know, I'm sure so many people watched uh, Kagi on when it happened in 2014. Um, but then, you know, it really wasn't really uh, that it was on, uh, you know, ultimately CBS All Access. Uh, but people really weren't going back and watching it much before it appeared on Netflix. What was it like for you then to have people going back and rewatching that for the first time? Well, that's actually one of the things that led to me creating this class is, you know, originally when I played, I mean, I received death threats after I flipped at the merge. Like people mm -hmm. legitimately were horrible. Like they would tell me to go kill myself, say horrible things, which still happens. But by and large, people thought I was a villain, right? Wait, 10 years ago. Well, then flash forward to 2020, it comes on. And all of a sudden I'm getting this social media um reaction. I'm like, what's going on? And then I see when I turn on my TV, there I am looking in a helicopter, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. um, and the reaction since then is that I was strategic. I played well and casting has told me after that came out on Netflix, I was the most referenced female player for a while in young professional women who they would play like which was a complete 180 from I'm going to play like poverty or something to say, I'm going to play like Cass because she didn't take shit. So culturally as a society, especially being like the over 40 mom type is an mm. archetype of its own, right? We're supposed to lay low, keep our mouth shut and cook the rice and get dragged to the end and get no votes. Right. So then I come out and I'm just, you know, a mess out there, uh, you know, making moves, doing what's best for my game, which is selfish for an older woman archetype. But then for young female players to see themselves as wanting to play like me um, showed just how much, how different the perception was because the edit didn't change, but the yeah. mindset of the people watching it did. So it's been kind of fun. And when I pitched it to the university, I said, I'm, I'm my own walking social experiment because I went from being vilified to not necessarily being uh, loved and everything, but certainly now more people like my gameplay in Kagiyan than did when it originally aired. And nothing's changed. It's the yeah. same edit. And um, and then when people rewatch it, they're like, oh my God, Spencer, Spencer was a douchebag. You know, he <laughs> said these comments. Why did I love him? No, they do. People say that. They're like, I yeah. loved him when I was younger, but when I watch it again, he was- And they were talking about Kagiyan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he says things like her estrogen or she's a um, brain brain dead, whatever, you know, and stuff. They're like, how come he was allowed to say that? And, you know, I didn't say anything like that about him. So I said he was selfish, mm -hmm. but, you know, beyond that. So when people see it from a different perspective, it's it's interesting. Yeah. So like just as a society, how we view these things and including like the diversity campaign and and things like that, just opening this conversation 
Do you have any other thoughts about the new era and how they've changed Survivor since when you played? Well, I mean, I'm just watching my first season. Yeah. Uh, I do not like the 90 minute episodes. I've thought the last two episodes have been kind of boring. Yeah. Um, like we had all that filler this week of who was going to get voted out for what. And I'm like, well, you just wasted like 22 minutes of my life. <laughs> and I even said that to my class, like, why does this matter when one of these tribes isn't going to tribal council? Mm -hmm. So this decision does not, and you know how it is on Survivor. It changes very quickly mm -hmm. what's happening out there. So why are we be sh being shown these pieces um, of this puzzle mm -hmm. right now? You know, who cares who's going home uh, if the red tribe loses because they're not going home. Yeah. Um, so I've been kind of bored. I know people are like, Oh, I love the camp life or the deep dive, but I don't care. I mean, <laughs> I did enjoy Like, why are they showing us Kendra like burping and farting and vomiting up worms? Yeah. That doesn't make you feel like you're back out there. Uh, no. You get that slice of camp life. No. And I feel like people are such wankers now. Like they're whining. And I the try survivor to keep, players. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know how they're screening them to go out. Mm -hmm. there. I mean, part of me thinks it's good when someone like Brandon goes out, who's a super fan and thinks all of this, because I think a lot of people who watch survivor and comment on Reddit are probably the Brandons of the world. Like I'm going to go out there and dominate. And then when they get out there, they literally flip flop around on a boat and, you know, cry and have a hard time. So mm -hmm. I almost think it's good to show us that, but we don't need three times that of quitters yeah. and stuff. Jeff has to be losing his mind over this season. <laughs> I don't know. He was not happy when Sean ultimately quit the game. Was he mad about Hannah? Not as bad, I don't think. Uh, that I think he felt like, because I think that the Hannah quit, and I'm surprised they didn't really embrace it more of that really they lean into, because they made it shorter. They really like pride themselves on how hard it is. They don't have food. And so to have Hannah come out and say, oh my God, I didn't know it was going to be this hard. I can't do this. Like, I think that in some way, I think that that sort of was um, l like really like uh, legitimized how hard the game is, even in a 26 day format. Whereas Sean didn't quit because it was hard. He quit because I, hey, I got what I needed to get out of this. So I I'd like to go home and just see my husband now. No, he quit because he was on the bottom and he didn't mm. have any fight in him, is my guess. Because you don't get to go home, or do you? Now I think that I, I don't think so. I, I think that maybe that they don't go on a trip uh, for the people that are on the pre-jury, but I think that they may go home a few days earlier than the rest of the group. Yeah, but it's not like he was going to go home that night and no. be reunited. Plus, 26 days is very different from 39. So yeah. to quit 9 or 10 days in, that I don't know. Like, I I just, I don't have a lot of respect for it. I mean, I was on the Brains Tribe. We didn't have any food either because someone threw it in the fire. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, but I've always said with Survivor, and one of my problems with the new shorter format is I really feel, especially having played a couple times, um, that around day 25 is when pe a lot of people reach their breaking point. Uh, where with the exhaustion, the paranoia, the discomfort, I I notice there's players, and I notice it when I watch, when you reach around this 25-day period, some people check out. They stop narrating. They stop being shown. Mm -hmm. And I witnessed it. And, I mean, one player that I know is like this, I, I say they're a 21-day player um, because they just mentally break down after that time. And you don't see it on on the show, but you'll see the, the edit fade from someone. And so I think 26 days, when you reach that mental point, which is around 21 to 27 days or something, uh, if you only have a day or two to go, you can probably drag yourself through it. But when you have two more weeks to go, yeah, it, it's a, a different ball game. So I get why they did it to save money. I mean, they're sticking with it to save money, right? Yeah. Costs, I mean, you're eliminating a third of your overhead. You still get, you know, you have such a formula there, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't, I haven't played the new game, but I think it should be 39 days or at least 30 days or, you know, something. Past that number. Yeah. 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 So. 
Cass, I have some questions for you from the listeners, and uh, I want to ask you a question from a person. Uh, now, his name is Omer Zahir. He actually played in Survivor 42. You didn't see his season, but he is a big fan of yours. And he said, Cass, you have to go on Survivor again. Uh, if you did, would you join the Lulu or the Luzon <laughs> tribe and why? Uh, bye 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 on. Uh, that's what he said. Um, now, Cass, would would you ever consider going back? You know, it's funny. I just talked to Abby the other day. It was yes, her how is Abby? It was Abby's birthday. Yeah, her birthday yeah. is the day after mine. We trade. Oh, uh, happy birthday! You know, yeah, yes, that. Uh, yeah, she's the twenty first. I'm the twentieth, and we always have uh exchange birthday messages. So she's doing great. She has a stable relationship yep. and has kind of gotten Survivor out of her system, I think, a little. Where yeah, you know, you know how players get bogged down and this is their life and they're waiting to get the call back. Yeah. Um, and it really does take more than that that eight weeks of your life away. It really takes away years of people's lives. I think we can all agree to that. Everyone has played. Um, so I'm happy to see her moving forward in a healthy manner away from the delusion of extending survivor life. Right. Mm -hmm. But we did, I did talk to her because some of my students, you know, they're all, Oh, Ed, would you play again? Well, you know, I'm in my fifties now, so yeah. it's not easy to do these things, nor do you care to at yeah. a certain stage of life. Um, go do this. But I always say to my husband, it's a business decision, you know, and I am friends with, you know, Sarah Lacina and some other people who have returned and are guaranteed certain paychecks if they set foot on the beach. And so to me, it would be a business decision. It's okay. not like I'm ever going to win Survivor. Um, yeah. So it would have to and, be how, how much am I getting for my two days on the beach? Okay. And and you're healthy. I know that uh, that one of the last times that we had talked, you had had uh, some, some health concerns and everything is good now. Yeah, actually, I don't know when we last talked, but I had a pacemaker. Yeah. It's been removed. Oh, look at you. Um, it actually turned out I never needed it. Oh, my God. And I'm actually suing the doctor. Yeah, okay. And um, our trial is in December this year. Okay, well, good luck with that. So, um, yeah, it turned out I went to a couple years in, I went and to my checkup and my battery life had increased. Yeah. And I said, how is that possible? And the technician said, uh, you've never used it. And I said, what? Uh, yeah. So uh, I was fortunate to, you know, figure it out and get everything removed. Uh, and then I was not happy, of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so well, I mean, uh, you know, uh, relieved to hear that, you know, um, you know, uh, unfortunately you went through a lot, but happy to hear that uh, it was not for uh a reason why where your your heart was in trouble yeah yeah and um it's kind of fun because i'm representing myself and the lawyers have no idea what to do with me because mm -hmm. i it, in texas we have limits of what you can recover if a doctor hurts you and usually people don't take it this far and do what i've done because a lawyer would never do that um and i've yeah. pretty much been beating them the whole time we had an, we went all the way up to the Supreme Court of Texas on one issue, which I prevailed on. Yes. And so it's, it's just been kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, and funny. Uh, not funny what happened, but uh, I've mm -hmm. discovered a lot about medical practice and things. So, yeah. Okay. Um, well, speaking of lawyers, uh, that's been a subject uh, this season where uh, there are lawyers that are pretending that they're not lawyers, uh, that we have lawyers who are being thrown under the bus for being lawyers. Uh, this is a question from Derek who said, do you have any advice for survivor lawyers? Now, you lied about your occupation. You said that you were, uh, you were uh, a reindeer farmer. Is that right? Yes, I said I was an exotic animal rancher. And by the way, it was not a lie. It was just an omission of my other That's job. Right. That's because right. Because there was truth in there. Um, I loved the episode where Katura was, you know, kind of playing up Jake's ego, that he was mm -hmm. a lawyer and she was just an office manager or something like that. Um, I love Katura uh, anyway, but I don't understand the edit she's getting. So uh, she's confusing to me what they're doing with her with just her relationship with Bruce being so central to her storyline, it concerns me. 
Uh, yeah. But, but I don't blame her for not saying she's a lawyer. She's a civil rights attorney. In fact, one of my students is from New York and knows of her, doesn't know her, um, but had good things to say about her. And then Jake is, um, you know, he's a man who's changed his life and he's proud of it. And he's a baby lawyer, as Katura has said, and is very excited about that potentially and wants to share it. Um, so, but yeah, you tend to think of a lawyer, they have money or maybe they're smart. I don't know. Lawyers don't, I guess Yule and Earl did well, mm -hmm. but beyond that, most of the lawyers think highly of themselves, but don't do well. Right. Um, it's it not always gone great. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, Cass, as somebody who studies the edit, and you mentioned Katara's edit, do you feel like that her edit is going to be she's the person who, you know, gets one over on Bruce? Or do you feel like that she is going to get got by Bruce? I feel like production had this extra 30 minutes they needed to fill every week or ever how many minutes. And probably if I'm out there filming and constantly seeing Katura mocking Bruce mm -hmm. and then seeing Bruce acting how Bruce is, uh, I and you're sitting in the pitch meeting, how are we going to extend these things quickly and easily? Well, here we can get some screen time to these two characters and throw it in there for no reason because neither of them are consequential, nor is this relationship. <laughs> so I think it's filler that's yeah. funny, kind of like the worm or that sort of stuff. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? I don't, well, I, I personally, I think that actually Bruce is in a bit of trouble going into uh, the merge. Well, Cass, you haven't seen these see, uh, seasons in the modern era. Wait till you see what they're going to do next week, where they have the merge. And unlike Survivor Kagiyan, where you have, okay, the two sides and who's going to ultimately come out on top, that they have a contest. They have a, a basically like an immunity challenge where half the people are going to be immune, not necessarily by their tribe, and only like six or seven people are going to be available to be voted for. Oh, okay. They call it mergatory. Why are they doing this? That's that, that because one of the ideas for the new era is that there's no place to hide. They don't want to like have a big vote at the merge, that they want to have where people are uh, in danger and smaller, only certain people are able to be voted for. So people have to really scramble. Was Tyler Perry involved in this? No, I don't think so. No, <laughs> okay, not this one. Okay. So yeah, uh, that's what's coming up. But I, I think that Bruce could be in trouble potentially at the uh, first vote. I mean, I would probably keep Bruce around because he's kind of grading on people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're only seeing little snippets. And uh, in my class, we did, you know, I said, well, who who is amused by this and who is not? And the majority were like, never would I want to live with that on the beach. Mm -hmm. You know, the constant, uh, you know, so I, yeah, I agree. He's, he's not in contention. Okay. So I, now I think that Bruce, the reason I think Bruce is in trouble is because I feel like that Caleb has been recruited to Katora's side. And I understand that that was your winner pick. Marcella wants to know, how does Cass think her winner pick Caleb will do? I mean, I still love Caleb. I love that he is, he's so social and versatile in how he's handling everything. And he's really thinking, he's playing every day and every minute from every angle. And to me, that's a great way to be playing. And we're being shown a lot of that. Yeah. But other people have kind of, we've seen where people are like, he's really charismatic and, you know, he could do this. Of course, he kind of reminds me of Jeremy who, we all knew everybody loved Jeremy and yeah. we let him slide by. But the question is, does uh, Caleb have a Tasha, someone who's going to ride or die to their detriment with him? And mm -hmm. I don't think Emily is like that. She wants to win and she's going to calculate. I don't think Katura is like that either. I mean, she is an attorney in New York, so she's probably a little cutthroat. So I could see him going out, you know, fourth or fifth sadly i still mm -hmm. like him and i still yeah. want him to win but with him being on the radar of people he'll be like a meat shield or a, a charisma shield of some sort uh you know what would they call it a mist he can be the mist for someone because he has <laughs> the mist right yeah so he, he can be the mist for katura or um someone else yeah 
Cass, uh, you mentioned uh, playing with Jeremy and, you know, uh, you were on the tribe also with Keith, who passed away uh, this uh, earlier this year. Did you have any uh, uh, memories of playing with Keith on Second Chances? Yeah, I was actually kind of sad. I mean, I'm sad that he passed and that's unfortunate for, you know, his family and the, the community because he's yeah. a very beloved character. Um when on second chances, we actually killed and plucked it. He taught me how to kill and pluck a chicken. Yeah. And then he gave me a little feather to put in my hair. So we had this bonding moment and I intentionally did that because I thought Keith has not talked to me and Keith, a lot of people in second chances had this immediate, Oh, Cass, I'm not giving her the time of day type of thing. So I actively went to him and said, Hey, Keith, can you, can you walk me through this? I want to yeah. do this as part of my experience because I haven't done it. And if I don't make it through, I'd like to say I at least killed a chicken. So we killed the chicken and he taught, we plucked it together. And then I took all the, the guts out and did everything. And, um, and he was like, that was really fun. So it was really, to me, a cool moment with Keith where we yeah. became, you know, we kind of bonded over our chicken killing. Now, of course, at the merge, he went with stupid Joey Amazing <laughs> and Kelly Wentworth. Uh, but we had that little secret alliance uh, with Sierra, yeah, Keith, Joe, Kelly, and I that we were going to, um, you know, be the five if we didn't have that early merge mm -hmm. to save Savage. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, we, we kind of chuckled. And then at Ponderosa, he was always fun. He was hanging out with the, the guys. Uh, you know, drinking with the staff kind of, yeah, some of the workers yeah. and, you know, smoking with them and stuff. So, mm -hmm. okay. Um, then thank you for sharing that, Cass. Uh, it's a, a fun memory. Addison wants to know that if you were in Austin's position, would you have convinced everybody to take the sandwiches or gone with the amulets? Well, the amulets are new to me. Yeah. But I mean, the uh, the the two girl the two women knew they had fish back home. Yeah. So are they going to take the sandwich? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it was smart to stay neutral on it for Austin. I mean, he wanted a sandwich. He had a justification. I also think he's playing extremely well. Pre-game, my students hated him. A lot of them didn't like because he was from Yale or something, mm -hmm. and he was kind of. Uh, they thought he was pompous, but now they all like him. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people had him as the first out, actually. So, really? Yeah, it was interesting. But remember, we just watched that one clip, and he had said something like, well, I'm from Yale, and kind of came off obnoxious. Uh, and so to see him kind of playing a more uh, casual play-along game is very smart of him. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what I would have done because I don't understand the amulet power. I'm not aware of all these new superpowers. But yeah, his, there's a lot of that in the new era, Cass. And his uh, rationale made sense to me, right? Like, we all have to use it together. We're not bonded. So that makes us basically targets for each other. Mm -hmm. But where he, I thought he lacked a little of awareness there um, in not thinking that the women might be thinking the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, he thinks he's the only one thinking that way, but maybe they're thinking that way as well. So, yeah. And he also has a bunch of stuff also. Yeah. He has like a bag of tricks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with him and Drew. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. You know, um, so Sifu is somebody who has said he wants to play like a Tony. Uh, he has said that he was going, he was running out. He was looking for the idol and trying to do Tony-esque things. Well, what do you think of that from Sifu? Well, I mean, when we saw Sifu trying to make his spy shack, we also yeah. saw him get caught immediately, Yeah, right? So we've seen Tony- Which also happened to Tony the second time he played. Correct. So what we saw of Sifu was Tony 2.0, bad version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And the difference between Sifu and Tony, I think their personalities are very similar in that, you know- they're they're just on all the time and weird things with the machetes and all that stuff. But Tony always had Trish or Sarah and yeah. Sifu has no one. And that kind of player needs someone to temper them and rein them in. So when mm -hmm. we saw Tony off the leash, he was voted out quickly because he was running around like the nut he is. 
Um, but when he has a Trish to roll to keep him on that leash or Sarah to uh, do so, he plays much better. Mm -hmm. So Sifu is out there running around, uh, you know, like a, like a wild puppy and someone needs to get him on a leash before he, you know, runs into trouble. Yeah. Cass, I, uh, saw on social media that you, uh, had been, I guess, checking out in addition to your Pokemon, uh, that you had been checking out the new survivor video game uh did uh you shared a picture of uh this person here this character Cass um that uh what's going on here I don't know I think it's a I I think it's an overreaching use of my name and likeness mm -hmm. I yeah. reread the contract Rob Yes um and uh it does say they have motion picture rights and you know all of these things but uh nothing about Nintendo <laughs> yes so uh uh and it was just funny because i said hey let's get this game it popped up on my daughter's playstation so we got it and we sat down to play it i never i don't play many video games and this character popped up right when i tried to play and i thought well that's weird yeah uh that it would come up like that and it, it rotates the characters and the names right um, i saw there was a woo uh i saw that there was a neca which is a very that was the name of somebody that was on survivor yeah. 43 so like uh we have like very specific unique, survivor yeah, names. yeah yeah unique names and you know cast cassandra is usually with a c and mm -hmm. then it's like a you know a caucasian woman with a green shirt and jorts on right and so i was like that's weird um so you know I don't think they have the rights to that. <laughs> the question is who's playing this game? I mean, yes, there's no value in it to pursue it, but I did see some unique names and I thought, are these contestants? I did recognize some names. Um, how did they choose these names? I don't, know. I don't know. I tried to get my kids to play it, but they said it was very boring. It's a shit game. Okay. <laughs> and I, I, I'm teaching that class with that game design teacher who's a video game person and she yeah. she was going to download it and play it and i said i don't get it it's really it's almost like if you played the sims one mm -hmm. you know the game the sims sure it has the graphic design of the first iteration of that i mean it's just very clunky and you know they have all these great games now you can play yeah why is this so bad and then you have to just bring what i mean the whole game is like bringing water yeah. yeah. So I'm going to wait till they uh to see where it goes. I don't know anyone who's playing it. I told my son, "Hey, play this game and then I'll interview you about your season." Uh and I said I'll give you $10. And and he said he seemed interested, but then he that he said it was too boring. It's way boring. It's not that it's complicated, it's just tedious. Mm -hmm. It's like Survivor. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it, that gives you a really good feeling yeah. of what it's like. So um I haven't played it since we bought it and played it once, but um, yeah, that character just popped up and my daughter just was like, what the heck? And I was like, I don't know. I mm -hmm. didn't do that. Nobody told me. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe there's a class action there for me and all the other <laughs> atypical name spellers yeah. out, um, out there. Cass, is there anybody else that's really standing out to you in Survivor 45? Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I like Caleb. We've seen we've seen too much Lulu, right? Like we've gotten a lot of well, Lulu. Well, that's the thing when you have like the disaster tribe that they get a lot of airtime. Yeah. So who else do I care for? Uh, see, I can't come up with anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of Drew. Yeah. I mean, I don't dislike him, but I don't feel connected. I think he's playing smart, but I feel like he's going to overplay it at some point mm -hmm. uh, with this you know, and with his flat out no to, I understood the no to uh, Brando because Emily was sitting right there. That kind of made sense to not be wishy-washy and show that strength. And he may even have known that Kendra had come to the beach, you know? Yeah. I don't know where that Kendra piece fits in. So uh, I've heard some buzz around Kelly, but we really haven't seen anything to indicate a winner edit or anything. I loved Sabaya, but that was my you know, winner pick. Yeah, she came. I mean, I really liked her more than I thought I was going to. 
And then she just came too hard for Caleb, you know, unnecessarily yeah. in my opinion when they're, but again, that was to me the, the bond of the religious group um, and to her detriment. Yeah. So now Cass, there are so many other shows that are out there where people they're bringing back survivors to play on all these different things. Would you ever consider playing on a different show that wasn't survivor? If you were asked, I think I like that traders show. Cause you get to go to like a castle. Wouldn't in that be Scotland. fun? Yeah. I mean, and it's only a two week filming, so it's mm -hmm. no big anything. And you could just go sit out there and, you know, drink some beer and sit around. Right. Yeah. Have you seen that? Allegedly, Parvati and Sandra are going to be part of the new Traders cast. Well, I hope Sandra takes Parvati out immediately, <laughs> which I think she'll do, right? Yeah, I think that they're probably not going to be on the same page. I wouldn't think so. I think they have some sort of beef. Yes, yes. So, yeah, um, yeah unless they're smart and would work together where mm -hmm. they can. But I bet Sandra's going to tell everyone that Parvati is the the traitor. Yeah. You know. Well, I think that any of these casting directors would be very foolish to not give you a call for one of these shows. Yeah. I want, I kind of wanted to be on the circle at one point too, but really? not anymore. I just, yeah. when I saw it, I was like, huh, this is interesting. Um, but now I haven't watched it since then, Yeah, but not, not many shows, but traders, traders would be easy. Right. Is there anything else fun that you're watching? Um, I'm pretty busy. You know, I have a teenager. She's in marching band and it's oh, football wow. season. So yes. it's like, like right now, this what evening, does she, play? she plays the trombone in marching band, but she's still a bass player. She's yeah. been playing bass forever. Um, so she's in the jazz band and stuff. But in fact, tonight, cause uh, I have to go work the uh, snack bar at the varsity football game. Okay. All the money goes to the band. Okay. If you, you, I, so I serve nachos. I'm on the chili and cheese um, to earn money. Uh, and our band has over 300 kids in it. It's a huge school. Yeah. And it's Friday. I live Friday Night Lights. That, yeah. that show where football, you know, it's uh, I got to go put my sweatshirt on that says the high school name and and all of that. Yeah. Uh, so but it's very time consuming. So yeah. I don't I've watched I've been watching Golden Bachelor. Um, and the one that's after it, pa Paradise or whatever. Oh, oh, yeah, Bachelor in Paradise, yeah. Yeah, it's a natural flow, right, to go from Gary to Trainwreck. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I tried to start watching Big Brother. I was really trying to ramp up my reality TV watching for my class. For the class, I knew yeah. The students would be, some students are super into all kinds of reality shows. Um, I tried to watch Big Brother, but it's so boring to me. Like, it's just tedious to... yeah watch it yeah and if then, you think the 90 minute survivor is boring wait until you watch three nights a week of big brother yeah and i didn't, wait until you get to day 86 of big brother 25 yeah i don't even care i just want it to be over i have these two cousins that are super into it and they're they're uh patreons or whatever oh you. okay uh, so shout out to sarah and cindy thank you sarah and cindy yeah um and they're super into big brother so they kind of keep me updated on the feeds and who's doing what, mm -hmm. but, uh, I know Sari is on there yep. and, uh, and her For son. Yep. No, yeah. No, yeah, Jared's out. Jared's He's out. He's out. Yeah. And, um, so I have my own opinions on that with, I don't think it was very fair to put them in there, you know, mm -hmm. cause they had that relationship. And then a lot of people were very critical of Jared and his behavior towards the women. Um, so I thought that was interesting you know, because Suri, who's beloved, is the mother of somebody who's potentially not a pleasant gentleman mm -hmm. um, and is doing all these things. So it'll be entertaining when she gets out to see her reaction. She can watch some of these clips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and, you know, when you think about it in the context of playing Survivor, I mean, would you ever go on again now that you're a parent and you have that life? It, it really takes away. Mm -hmm. Right. From your family. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I would not be uh, dying to do it. Like uh, maybe I, I might have been once upon a time. Yeah, and and you know the toll it takes on you. Even though you play, you get back. You're all wound up and and yeah, just. I'm to fine. Get... I'm fine here, Cass. Yeah, 
That's how I feel. I feel like if I ever went back, it would just be to last two days and sit in Fiji for the rest of the month mm -hmm. and take my, my money, you know, yeah. and, uh, like, you know, like that would be my understanding, which is kind of where I was at in second chances. Like, like I'm going to go, nobody, I'm not going to get anywhere. Um, and then you end up on the jury with Andrew Savage and become besties, you know, mm -hmm. no, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel like in his life, his mom was gone at key points in his development. And then probably because Suri is kind of a career contestant at this point, having played mm -hmm. so many shows so many times. Um, I'm sure that affected him to have a mom that is known for that and to be Suri's son and not Jared. And, you know, I think there's a lot of things to unwrap there. Uh, in terms of that relationship and how he grew up and, you know, missing key things. And I don't mean just by being gone to film. I mean, being mentally unavailable uh, after d these things. Mm -hmm. So, so I think yeah. there's a lot there that maybe they'll sit back and look at after this. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe uh, you can get into that next semester. Yeah. Well, there's not many parent, you know, child, duos on reality TV. Mm -hmm. I know I would never let my kid go on a reality TV show. And in the class, I really lecture people about not going on, especially when you don't know who you are as a 20 some year old. Um, yeah. Like look at Spencer. He's back on social media. Ryman, um, you know, he's, this ruined him. This, this altered his life permanently. It, def it altered. It definitely. Uh, yeah. He really it, went through a lot. And, um, it makes me sad, you know, like who would he have been had he not gone on Survivor? Yeah. Would he be smoking and doing like doing drugs and tweeting uh, oddball things at age 30 something? Or would he be a banker? You know, <laughs> who's to say chess master? Um, yeah. All right. Well, Cass, I really appreciate you making some time to talk about all this stuff. Uh, it's always so fun to hear from you. And this really was a thrill for me to reconnect. Yeah, it's fun. And I, you know, I'm like I said, I'm kind of out of it now. I just don't follow it. Now I'm doing a little trolling on social media just because it's funny. Yeah, but that's you. Yeah. I can't yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm never gonna stop doing that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I'm glad that you're still having fun with it. And uh congratulations on the class. And uh it sounds like it's going really successful. Do you want uh to tell people to follow you on social media or are you good with the followers you already have? I don't, I'm not in need of any validation on mm -hmm. social media. Yeah, I don't know. I still have a lot of followers. I don't know who they are because I'm rarely on there, but uh, mm -hmm. they're waiting. They're waiting for you to come back. That's my ploy is I just come out and say something and they're like, yes, you queen. never know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm sure it irritates people who don't have a lot, but the best advice is to shut up on social media and people keep following you. Mm -hmm. You're waiting because then they don't know when it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're still having success and uh, you've built your empire out. Hanging in there, hanging around. Yes. And North Carolina, you like it there? Yeah, we do. Uh, it's been really nice. It's a nice place for the boys to grow up. So, um, you know, I don't leave the house. So I really, I could do this from anywhere. I could be like in a bunker. That's creepy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I don't need to come up for air. Uh, but from what I understand from my family, it's a nice area. Yeah. I mean, getting out of LA is probably great for raising. Children. I think it's good for the kids. I don't think it's a great place for the, the kids to grow up. Yeah. And then uh, doesn't a lot of survivors live out there, like Johnny Fairplay? And... No, well, he's uh, he's in Virginia. Oh, is okay. Yeah, yeah. The one person, the one person who lives close to me, uh, he played on Survivor forty three, but I don't know if you would know him. I would not. Yeah, yeah. So there's nobody uh, else uh, that's too close to where I am. I apologize to the people of seasons forty one through forty four. I have maybe, no interest. Look, in... that'll be the the over these like maybe. Uh, one semester, you have to go back and watch one of the old seasons if there's not a season on. I did go watch the first episode of 44 just to see how Bruce yeah. uh, was went out. And then you turned it off after five minutes. I did. I yeah. did. I had zero <laughs> interest. It. Yeah. 
And even watching it, it's really funny to watch it with my class because I'm not sure I even care for the show so much anymore. But uh, just to, you know, expose people to these things. Yeah. Um, and like this week, we're going to, um, we're doing, or next week, we're doing social media and reality TV. And I'm having the students read some stuff from my Instagram. I'm just going to have them stand oh, wow. up and read the comment to my face that someone wrote about me. Read, the, re not your post, the comments to your post. Mm -hmm, the comments. Wow. Okay. And just say, just to teach them, like, there's real people there. Yes. Well, you should and live stream this also, Cass. You think? I, I think should, so. I don't Go think live. I'm allowed to. A student did put on the TikTok uh, my syllabus and flashed up to me, and he got like 600,000 views Okay. that night um, for leaking the syllabus or something. Uh, and then someone did one of those AMAs on Reddit. I'm in her class, AMA, mm -hmm. you know, ask me anything. Yes. And then he was writing all this stuff I didn't say, and I was like, were you drunk in class? Mm -hmm. um, but everyone's outed who did it. But we're not allowed to film in class for per privacy reasons, right? Okay. So. All right. Well, pay the tuition, transfer over, and you can be there in person to hear from Cass. Cass, thank you for making the time to do this. Uh, this was a real treat for me. Uh, catch everything else we're doing here, especially for Survivor. You can go to robisawebsite.com slash subscribe for everything that we're doing. Thank you again, Cass, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Have a good one. Thanks, Bye. Rob.